got a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. May God bless you and may heaven's grace continue to smile upon you. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. My brothers and sisters, the book of Psalms declares these words. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let's bow our heads wherever you are in your living room in your car, in the park, wherever you are, in your place of sanctuary, let us bow for and be a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we come at this hour to give you all the praise and all the honor. We praise your holy and your righteous name for all that you have done. We thank you, dear God, for bringing us to this place on November the 29th, 2020. Giving us one more day, one more opportunity, dear Lord, to get our lives together, get it right with God, and to accept your grace and your mercy inside of our lives. We humbly thank you, dear God, for bringing us this far. Now, Lord, we pray that those who hear the words coming forth from this pulpit today will be able to comprehend, understand, discern, and apply to their lives, what thus say the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dying and shedding your blood that you could that you have allowed us to have the right to eternal life. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We are forever grateful for all that you have done and what you are going to do. For we know that 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4 teach us the gospel truth. So we know that on the third day you were resurrected into the newness of life. Yes, yes. Where you now sit on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for bringing us salvation. And now, Lord, we ask you to bless the service today, the message that will go forth to your people, that they will hear what thus say the Lord. It is in the mighty and the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for our church. We pray, God, for the first responders who are battling this pandemic, this plague that is going across the world. Over 260,000 fatality deaths have occurred, and more are occurring each day. According to your will, God, let your hands stay. Let the vaccine come forth and protect your people, yeah. and allow people to know, dear God, that they ought to be in a state of worshiping you yes, and not lying to you. Yeah. We thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. 
Let the church say amen and amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, I'm very happy once again uh, to be here uh, this morning. Amen. Just give me one second. We're in the church alone. I have to turn the microphone down a bit. Amen. That is much, much better. We thank God and we praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for all of the wonderful, magnificent things that he has done inside of our lives. Today, uh, in, my, in my opening commentary, I just want to say a few things. Number one, I'm very pleased, happy that the country is, is getting back on track a little bit. Amen. In, in fact, uh, the General Service Administration has released now, has released now, uh, the proper authorization to allow democracy to continue and take take place as it should at the conclusion of our national election in which you all know that there's a new president elect Joseph Biden Amen. and vice president elect Kamala Harris designated Amen. to be sworn in on January the 20th we praise God. God teaches us in Revelation that he says to us that I, I will make all things new. Yes. And God is doing something new, hopefully, that will transition our country into even a greater democracy. Let's, let's make democracy great. How's that? Yes. Let's make democracy Amen. great. How's that? Now, I'm a little bit concerned, my brothers and sisters, uh, frankly, uh, about a, a, a senator from South Carolina going to Michigan and telling the people in Michigan to throw out votes and change the votes so that we can have a corrupt election. I, I'm not quite understanding that part of it. And also, my brothers and sisters, I, I'm asking everyone that has any additional funds, there is a runoff campaign that is going on in Georgia. If you have any additional funds, please support and contribute to that election. Choose your own candidate, whoever you will, but research who it is that has your interest at heart. But whatever you do, contact every person that you know in the state of Georgia. I'm told that over 140,000 young people will be eligible to vote by the deadline for registration. So whoever you know in Georgia, young people, senior citizens, those persons that uh, want to see justice and righteousness prevail and have a chance at life, contact everyone in Georgia, not like the senator of South Carolina did trying to corrupt people. Mm -hmm. We still have a ways to go, but we want you to exercise your voice to your friends, to your colleagues. Mm -hmm. And also, I want you to keep in prayer those persons, my brothers and sisters, who in fact need support, assistance, and love, kindness, those persons who are in uh, nursing homes, nursing facilities, and I'm moving around the world for God's purposes. We praise God and we give God all of the honor. Indeed, moreover, we give God all the glory for the great and magnificent things that he has done. Someone asked, well, why are you talking about uh, politics from the pulpit? The reason is because we can talk about it. Yeah. As long as we're not endorsing any particular candidate right. and it's bipartisan that we can talk about it and the other thing is because somebody ought to say something. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. There's, a, okay. there's a, a void in voices around this country, in particular from some of our poor pits, where people are not saying a word about anything. Mm -hmm. And it was a time when the ministers were the leaders of the civil rights movement. Yes. Many have now faded into the background, sitting high atop their perch, and not supporting the people who need support. Someone has to say something about this. And so we give God all the praise and all the honor for the great and marvelous things that he has done. Today, uh, my brothers and sisters, I would like to bring to your attention several scriptures in, this, in the Bible 
uh, that we're going to talk about very briefly. We're not going to have a selection uh, this morning uh, due to time and everything else, but I, I want you to know I I'm excited. I've been praying to God to assist, help, and support the effort that we have going on right now in the pulpit. I'd like you all to pray with me as I continue to uh, deliver the word of God in a way uh, uh, that is profound and will give God all the glory in every single thing that we do. Let us read then the scripture and the subject, the subject for today here at Servants for Christ Baptist Church, the subject today, listen, come, come, come here now, listen. The subject is, why lie? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Why lie? Yeah. Not why lie. <laughs> why lie? Amen, amen. Yeah. Now, go get your mother, go get your brother, go get your sister, your niece, nephew, uncle, cousin. Even bring the dog to the television or to the Facebook and let the dog sit there and do like this. Amen, somebody. Amen. I was talking with a dog the other day. Amen. Why not? <laughs> Remind me of the dog didn't talk back, thank God. <laughs> Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. I don't want to have to tell the story about it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the book of Deuteronomy, we, we find these verses in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 21 through 23. And there we will find these words. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 21 through 23. Amen. 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 Hold on one Verse second. 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Okay. 23 verses 21 through. Yeah. And the Bible reads as follows. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it would be sin in you. But if you abstain from vowing, it shall not be sin in you. That which has gone from your lips, you yeah. shall keep and perform. For you voluntarily vow to the Lord, your God, what you have promised with your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, my brothers and sisters, when we look over in the book of Acts, chapter 5, Verse 1 through 11, let us read together those verses. For those of you who have your Bibles, we're begging and declaring that you will read from your Bible. In the book of Acts chapter 5, the Bible declares these words, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain Heart and lay it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Mm, come on now. And to keep back part of this price of the land. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in your heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Yeah. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Mm. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, 
How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Mm. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. My question to you is today is not a statement, it is a question. And the question is embedded in two simple words. Why lie? Why do we go around in life and why do we lie about things that are unnecessary? Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord who is my strength and my redeemer. As I thought about this, amen, as I thought about this message today, it became very clear to me that there are many people in life that lie. <laughs> One thing that I cannot stand is a liar. My mother right now is in the hospital suffering from a stroke in the rehabilitation center, and she keeps asking the question, when are you all coming to get me? I have five children. Just come to the door. I will get up and walk to the door or come to the window, get a ladder, and come and get me out of here. Mm. I said, Mama, we're going to come and get you. She said, I know that I'm leaving because you will not lie to me. Mm. Your word has a lot of repercussions to the people who hear your word and listen to what you say. Yes. We're oftentimes here, we should speak truth to power. But when we get in the presence of power, we lie. Yeah. Come on. When we're on our jobs, amen, somebody. Amen. Some of y'all might as well get your shoe toes shine off now because your feet are about to be stepped on in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yeah, come on now. And we get on the job and we stand up and know that we're lying on someone, we're not telling the truth, and we have just told an outright lie. Yeah. Because we want to advance our own cause. We want to advance our own self so that we can be better, so that we can be more prosperous, so that we can have a better stake in life. We choose to lie. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I've done it. Mm -hmm. I've, I've lied. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. very few times. The only time that I've really lied is when I'm trying to protect someone else's feelings. Somebody come to me and say, am I ugly? I'm going to say, you looking good today. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not really lying, but uh, amen, somebody. You don't want to do things that's going to hurt people's feelings. That's right. yeah. Impossible. That's right. I learned a long time ago, if you can't say something nice about somebody, yeah. just say you're looking good. You're looking good. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. But people lie for no reason. People lie when they take an oath and they swear to uphold the truth, when they swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, when they uphold in their marriage vows that they will love and, and honor and, and, and forsake everything else. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. When people say that they will do a certain task for a certain amount, they don't do these things. In fact, what they have done is lie when they come to Jesus Christ and say that I will obey you and I will do what you have asked me to do. I will honor you. I will pray. I will, I will read scripture every day. I will go out and witness to the world. They are not being very truthful Amen. about what they should be truthful Amen. about. Amen. And here we have today a scripture that's coming out of the book of Deuteronomy where the Lord God has said that when you take a vow, mm -hmm. you ought to keep it and perform it. And now we have in the book of Acts, amen, somebody, amen. Uh, that uh, Ananias and uh, Sapphira, his wife, are not being very truthful, amen, somebody, about amen. what it is that they are supposed to be doing regarding the work that the Lord has given them to do. Right, right. You see, my brothers and sisters, uh, in the book of uh, chapter 23 of Deuteronomy, we learn that the theme is the world, the flesh, and the devil. And as Moses writes the scripture, he tells us that when we, when we vow a vow unto the Lord God, we ought to keep it. Yes. Yes. 
I remember when I was beginning to, I was in Jerusalem um, at the King Solomon Hotel and I was broke on a pilgrimage. And I was not tithing. I think I was just beginning to become a deacon in the church. And I would do like some people, many people, pull out my little knot, pull out my money, and have the knot there, you know, 1500 whatever's in there, and then I would take out a dollar and give it to God, like I was doing God some kind of favor. And I wasn't really being honest with the distribution of the funds that God had given to me. I was lying. And I said, God, I'm broke. If you will bless me, I will tithe from this day forth. When I got back from Jerusalem, there was a check in the mailbox for $1,800. Wow. To this day, I still don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. Amen. The test. When we vow to the Lord, God will test us to see if what we say is true. Mm -hmm. I started tithing then almost 50 years ago and have not stopped since then. Wow. And God has blessed over all that time. Amen. Yeah, yeah. When we vow, vow to the Lord, he doesn't require it, but we ought to keep it. Yeah. And then, my brothers and sisters, um, a vow to the Lord is a voluntary act. You're not required to take that. Many of us make these vows to the Lord, and we say, Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, I have some problems today uh, that I need you to help me contend with. Uh, God, oh God, if you help me through this, uh, situation. I promise God, oh God, if you help me through this situation, I promise uh, I will do A, B, and C, and then we cross our heart, and with haste, oh Lord, it is my husband, oh Lord, it is my job, amen, oh Lord, it is my child, oh Lord, it is the preacher, oh Lord, it is my loved one, oh Lord, it is my health, oh Lord, is everything uh, that's gone wrong in my life. Oh, Lord, it is my car. Just, Lord God, whatever you do, just don't leave me. Don't forsake me. Oh, Lord God, it is all these things. And, God, it is my help. It is my breast. It is my eye. Oh, Lord, it's my hand. And, Lord God, please bless me. And as soon as God bless us, yeah. we turn our back on him. Yeah. Come on, man. Don't even have the time to say thank you, Lord. I praise your holy and your righteous name for what you have done. Yeah. Bless, Lord. Bless, bless, bless. Help me even right now, Lord, to get this message out and across to your people that they will no longer turn their backs on you, oh Lord. Please, Lord, just, 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 just get my family member out of trouble this one time who has committed murder, rape, robbery, committed insidious behavior, all the things that they've done. Help one time, Lord God. And I will give you all the praise. I will, I, I will give you the glory. We have a tendency to make a vow to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then we, when God delivers these things to us, yes, we go ahead and we turn it out. But let me move along, my brothers and sisters. I, a, 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 a free will offering, many of you give a free will offering in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, surely around the time of the day of Pentecost, we learn a few things. We learn that all the people who were there sold their possessions and bought the profit from the possessions and laid it at the apostles' feet. At the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, shortly around the time of the Pentecost, Lame man was healed. The people were in the upper room praising God. Jesus Christ had already uh, ascended in, in, into heaven and gave, the, gave the, the disciples and the apostles a charge to go ye therefore in all the earth in Matthew in, in the book of Acts chapter 1-8. He's telling them, don't do anything until you receive power from on high and once you receive the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then go out to all the world, Judea, yeah. Samaria, mm -hmm. and other most parts of the world, yeah. proclaiming the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But in this situation, my brothers and sisters, we observe lame man being healed. We notice Peter and John is arrested and see uh, them addressing the Sanhedrin, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Essenes. 
Hallelujah, the zealots, we see this. And everyone had everything in common. They were all on one accord, my brother and sister. Can you imagine yeah. what would happen if we would stop dividing the left from the right and we're going to reach across the aisle or the left and the right because I got a different ideology, a different philosophy, and so we're separated because we want to show that we have the power and authority to regulate what's going to happen. Well, I'm told that in the kingdom of God that there's not going to be any of that. There's going to be no owl. The owl's going to be collapsed. And we're going to be one people. One. We need to start practicing that oneness now where all are on the same accord, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Yes, yes. The apostles were given uh, witness to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There was not anyone among them that lacked anything. When we put all, everything together, ha, when we put it all together, then we all can have a little of something rather yes. than much of nothing. Yes, yes. That's right. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. However, however, we learn that there's always an outlier in the group. Hmm. Well. There's always one who is going to be selfish, not selfless, always one who is going to be selfish, and they're going to say, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is yours. Hmm. When all of us are putting in, all of us are trying to make sure that the church succeed, and what do you do? You sit there and you say, what's mine is mine. Mm -hmm. I learned some time ago that the cattle on Thousand Hill belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. I learned some time ago that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. We learned that there was a man named Ananias. He was one who wanted to get over on God. Mm -hmm. I tried that when I was not giving my tithe. Some of you have never done that. I tried that when I did not tell the truth about my witness and my testimony, and I was still going around committing sin, fornication, lust, lasciviousness, adultery, whatever it was, murder, lying, stealing. I tried. Many of you not guilty of any of that. I tried to get over on God. It didn't work for me. Sir Paley said, how's this working for you now? My brothers and sisters, I, I'm, I'm here to let you know uh, uh, that I did not know very much. And, and sure, you can try to get over on your neighbor. You can try to get over on your brother, sister, niece, nephew, uncle. You can try that. And sure, you can get over. And, and no one will suspect that you are not a person of honesty and integrity until you fall down in the ditch like I was mm -hmm. in the ditch. Well. And people looking at you and they say, well, there's the pastor. He down in the ditch. Why? Because the pastor was not performing the daily duty that the pastor was supposed to perform. The pastor got wicked eyes and looking in the wrong direction and not doing what the pastor is supposed to do. And God says that vengeance is mine. Yes, it is. So, my brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm saying that uh, I want you to consider three simple points. Number one is uh, have the right or wrong intentions. You decide. Number two, there are some consequences for lying. Yes, it is. You decide. Yes. God rewards faithfulness. Yes. You can enjoy the privileges of God. Let me get right to it. My time is, is, is running through. Uh, we better get this straight that, that, that you can hold back on me uh, because I do not know better. This is the right or wrong intentions, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And not, not only that, uh, when you hold back on your wife and on your husband because uh, they trust your sinful intentions, my brother and sister. They say that you're going to do one thing and you end up doing something totally different. My wife trusts me. And if I sin, then those are my sinful intentions, my brother and sister. She cannot see my thoughts or understand the desires that I have inside of my heart. 
to do wrong. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can hold back, uh, you can hold back, hallelujah, on your family members because they think that you are righteous and upright. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, but you had better know that when you hold back uh, on God, you are placing uh, yourself in harm's way. Amen, somebody, when you hold back. Amen. Why? Because God is omniscient, omnipotent, hallelujah, uh, Lord Jesus. He's everywhere all the time, and he's all powerful yeah. in every single way that we can think of or imagine it. What you're doing is that you're putting yourself at risk because you are not lying to man, I, uh, but you are lying to God. And, and now let's get right down to it. Hallelujah. Uh, now, uh, what part of your life do you keep back from God? Huh? Yeah. Do you keep back your, your money from God? It's God's yeah. money. Do you keep back your witness? It's God's testimony. Yeah. Huh? Uh, do you keep back your righteous behavior? Huh? Lord, hallelujah. Come on here now, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it, Pastor. Come on now. Let's yeah. get right into it. What part of your witness do you hold back from God? Yeah. What, part? what part? What part? What are you keeping back? Are you laying everything on the table? Are you putting everything at the feet of the apostle? Are you lying to God in a way that you shouldn't? So the fact of the matter is, is that uh, uh, you don't really own anything from the beginning. I was thinking that when I die, all this stuff I got, I got ring, jewelry, clothes, shoe, car. And I look at people that go into the grave. When I go bury people, guess what they got on? They got on a suit. <laughs> or a baseball jacket or a red skin outfit or a Washington team logo. And they don't have any rings and jewelry. And if they do have on a piece of ring or jewelry, somebody come at the last minute and say they don't need that. Let me take it off. Mm -hmm. Steal it from the dead. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Not taking nothing away in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, God knows about your service to him. Yes. God knows that when you get up in the morning, whether you're holding back your prayer. God knows when you get up in the morning, when you sing the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. And Amen. he knows. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, God knows that he has provided you with gifts that you refuse to use. Yeah. It's not enough to come to church just sit in the seat of importance for God himself has already said out of his mouth to the church leader. Woe to you, scribes, and woe to you, Pharisees, hypocrites. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God has already told us that we have been weighed in the balance. And God knows our temperature. He knows what it is that we are giving to him. He knows what we have professed and confessed out of our mouths. But we sit there and we do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Well, now. God is sick and tired of your mess. Yes, he is. God wants your best. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What part of your witness and your testimony do you keep back from God? Mm -hmm. I, I declare to you today that God is worthy to receive all the honor and the glory. Yes, he is. Revelation yes, 4 11 tells us that yes. God created all things for his purpose, and for his purpose they are created. Yes. yes. Not only that, my brother and sister, secondly, there are consequences for lying, consequences of lying. We've already developed and unfolded for you today that when you make a vow out of your mouth, you have to perform it. Yeah. Yeah. Ananias and Sapphira made a vow mm -hmm. to put the purchase price proceeds of the land mm -hmm. at the feet of the apostles mm -hmm. who were caring for the church mm -hmm. once they were going to get the deacons in a little in a couple more seconds. Mm -hmm. They paid the apostles a part of it. Like many of us. You got money? Here, take this. That's, a, that's what we paid for. But you actually paid this. Mm -hmm. Keeping back a part for itself. There's some consequences when you lie to God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Peter simply said to Ananias when he bought the possession, the, the, the proceeds of the sale, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? He 
He asked him, while it remained with you, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? In other words, while you had your land, it was yours. And even while you sold it, you still had the power. And you still possessed everything. So why would you come when everyone else is doing their part in the service, when everyone else is giving all that they have, and you want to be a part of this oneness, why do you keep back what you shouldn't keep back, but you want to be a part of us? Mm. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> why? <laughs> Sermon title of the day is Why Lie? Mm -hmm. Don't lie. <laughs> Any lie. And now it's hearing these words from Peter, the possible, the man of God, one who the church was built upon, the Vatican in Rome today, hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came upon all those who were present. If you lie to God, right now, my brothers and sisters, in our Revelation Bible study, we're in chapter 11. We're getting ready to move to chapter 12. We're talking about the two witnesses. And those witnesses who came to possess the power that God had given them, anyone lied to them or tried to attack them, fire immediately came out of their mouth and devoured them. Mm. And then they were killed by Satan and his demons. And three and a half day, lay, days later, they were resurrected into the news of life, and great fear came upon them. I simply want to ask a question today. Why is it that when the power of God comes upon you and you receive the consequences for the transgression of not worshiping, not praising God, that you become afraid then? Why aren't you afraid when you know that the power of God is present before you when you said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me? And my brothers and sisters, the scripture go on to read, as I rush along, that their consequences are lying. And it was about the space of three hours and after, and when his wife came in, Sapphira, knowing, not knowing what was done, she came in, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And Peter asked unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Then Peter said, how is it? In chapter, in, in chapter 5, verse 9 mm -hmm. of Acts, mm -hmm. Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Consequences of lying. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister, it doesn't matter whether your husband or your wife know the gospel, whether my wife know it or not. One thing that my wife can tell you is that I never ask her to lie. I never try to lead her down a path that is going to create uh, destruction for her. If there's anyone inside of your life that will cause you destruction, I say to them, you say to them, good riddance. Because Ananias and Sapphira both chose to lie to God and not praise God and not worship God. And Ananias paid the price of his life and his wife. She fell down straight away at his feet and yielded what God had given to her, the Holy Ghost. Mm. And young men came in and found her dead. The young man who was standing at the door with the feet. Somebody out of preacher sermon titled, The Feet at the Door. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Amen. All right. <laughs> Come on now. God rewards faithfulness. Yeah, Third does. point. And all this time, uh, you tell me that uh, I do not hold back anything. I, I, I have not held back a thing. I, I went out into the vineyard and worked because I realized that the harvest was plentiful, but the laborers were few. Mm -hmm. 
I attended the church event uh, when I was supposed to. I witnessed to that person that I was supposed to. I, I gave my tithe today. I, I, I am supporting the pastor like I am supposed to. That's not true. I'm attending the church faithfully. That's not true. I raise my hands. You do that. You shout hallelujah. Yes, I am not holding back anything from the church, from the pastor, from any place. I am doing exactly what I am supposed to do. But isn't it somewhere in Corinthians where it tells us, let a man examine himself? Yeah. <laughs> let me tell you, say, there is no reason or no excuse for you or me to hold back anything when it comes time to worship and praise my Lord and your Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, you might ask, well, what do I get? What is the reward? Tell you what, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 to read verses 1 through 15, my brothers and sisters, when your time allows. Uh, and hallelujah. Uh, what God says that he will do for you uh, is that he will give you the incorruptible crown that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, uh, verse 25 through 27. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Uh, let me move right along. He will give you the crown of life that is found in the book of James chapter 1, verse 12, and Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Hallelujah. Now only will he give you the crown of life, everlasting life. He will give you the crown of righteousness, my brothers and sisters, that is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Amen, somebody. Amen. And he will give you the crown of rejoicing, where you can rejoice and praise God throughout all eternity, forever and ever and ever, that there will be no ending at all. And he will give you the crown of glory. Found in 1 Peter oh, yeah. chapter 5, verse 4, my brothers and sisters. And, and not only that, my brothers and sisters, your life can be different if you do not hold back any part from our Lord and Savior or Jesus Christ because uh, uh, he sees what you do. He knows it. And God uh, does not like when you're not worshiping and praising God when you're holding back. When God came, he, he died on the cross. He gave his only begotten son that you and I could have the right to eternal life. And Jesus went to the cross. He was stretched wide upon the cross. How you like it if God would say, I'm not sending Jesus. I'm going to send a donkey, a calf. And you can continue to get the blood, hallelujah, the atonement from those animals that I will say, I'm going to hold back a part. I'm going to hold back righteousness. I'm going to hold back justice. I'm going to hold back the purging of your life into the kingdom of God. How would you like it? Now, you don't want to be found wanting. No. You would be like the lady who we are told about in the book of Luke, who we're told as Jesus was uh, talking to his disciple, he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And the lady cast in two mites, almost like two pennies. The rich man casting in what he had. Jesus said, that woman had given everything. Yeah. He said, why? Because she gave all she had. Yeah. Are you giving all that you have today to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or are you holding back <coughs> something from God? Yes, are you holding back? He asked him a question. He said, why has Satan filled your heart? Mm. My brother and sisters, you have to ask yourself, has Satan filled your heart? Is Satan causing you to hold back from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? In the beginning, we talked about this. We said, that which is gone out of thy lips according, thou shalt keep and perform as a free will offering. According as thou hast vowed to the Lord thy God, you have vowed to him, which thou hast promised with your own mouth, keep in mind that you need to perform it. The Satan will fill your heart and cause you to lie to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And you too will keep back a part of what belongs to God and what could be yours. Mm -hmm. Simply because you refuse to follow God in all of his ordinance, statutes, and commands. Mm -hmm. You've been told the way out. The way out is through true justice, faith, and proper service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The way out is to do what God has asked you to do and what God has given you the innate ability to do, and that is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your being, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Why lie? Why? There's no need to lie. There's no need to lie. I ask God to continue to bless you, if you're getting excited, if you're moving around, if you get stirred up, yeah. if you want more, then you can come back and join us next Sunday. Amen. Amen.
at 8 30 we'll be proclaiming and professing the unadulterated word of god to seep deep down inside of your heart to bring a transition to your life the only thing that god is asking you to do today is just tell the truth be truthful. Be truthful. Do the best that you can. We we realize that you're not perfect. Neither am I. Mm -hmm. I have faults, rarities, frustration, disappointment, illusions. I can't stand a liar. Mm -hmm. I'd rather when you go talk to the dog <laughs> than come to me with a lie. <laughs> if you don't know how to talk to the dog, let me give you a lesson. <laughs> You hear the dog talk back to you. <laughs> One, One lady say, don't lie. <laughs> we love God and we thank God for what he's done and what he's going to do. Amen. If, you're, if you don't have a church home, if you're unchurched and you're unsaved and you would like to join us virtually, we have members that have joined us. Yes. We have members that are supporting our ministry. Go to our website. Servants for Christ, INC .org. Yeah. Servants for Christ, INC .org. So we thank God for you. We thank God for the testimony. This has been a powerful message for you today. Yes, yes, yes. It is. If you can, if you can oh, dissect God. it and put it inside of your spirit, the message is not from me. The message is from God. If you can dissect it and put it in your spirit. Just do the work of the Lord and don't lie. Amen. Don't lie. Why lie? May God bless you. We will see you next Sunday here on Servants for Christ Baptist Church, on Facebook, on DC TV, on Prince George's County TV, and on our Bible study on Zoom, Facebook, every, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. And also for our special edition, our 11 o'clock service will be on Zoom, Facebook, at 11 o'clock this morning where our internet pastor, Reverend Harry E. Lundy, will be delivering the message. May God bless you. Let's bow for a word of prayer as we wrap this up. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your peace. Yes. Thank you, we thank you for your patience. Yes. Thank and you. even now, as we come before your presence with exceeding joy, we give you all the honor and all the praise. And bless us, dear God, as we prepare to depart from this place. Yes. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, who is my strength and my redeemer. And now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May God bless you. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Good word. Good word. Amen.